What's up everybody, Unrested, and uh, today I am in a new location for a JFAC. Uh, I'm trying to kind of mix it up. As you can see, I've put myself in a different playground today to talk. I always think playgrounds are kind of the nicest and easiest area for me. They tend to be kind of quiet this early in the morning before I start my work. Uh, not a lot of kids out here yet, um, and at the same time, if there are any people out here, they're usually doing uh, Undokai or Radio Taiso, which is just like radio exercise that is broadcasted across Japanese radio every morning, which is uh, a bunch of very, very low impact uh, exercises that maybe perhaps help people, I guess they help people kind of stretch more than anything. They don't really get you toned up or shredded or anything like that. They're just kind of, I think, for stretching and stuff like that. Anyway, today, let's get on topic. We've got cons and scams in Japan. Are there any? Um, for the most part, Japan is a pretty safe place to be able to avoid cons and scams. I would say in comparison to many, many other countries that you could possibly live in or visit, the amount of scams and cons that are here are minimal to say the least uh, in comparison. Nonetheless, that does not mean they are uh, at point zero. Uh, they are actually existing here and come in many forms and uh, you should be aware. and. Uh, I feel, I feel it's always important to keep my viewers informed of these things because um, I, there's scams I've fallen for myself in the past. We've all been victims of scams at some point, I imagine. Um, and even within the own, our own JVlog community, there's been situations where there's been scams and people have gotten scammed. And all over YouTube, there's been people who've gotten scammed. There's been all different types of, oh, who knows, you know, things connected to multimedia. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, all that type of stuff. So if I can at least help some little tiny bit to regulate just this tiny, tiny, tiny corner of the internet that I chat up and make videos for, all the better. We can make at least one small part of our tiny community better. So let's jump right in. Um, I myself heard about this one scam when I was researching uh, coming to Japan and it was confirmed with me uh, from friends living in Tokyo. I've never heard of anybody having this happen in Osaka though. Apparently there is some scammers who run ads for English teaching jobs in which they ask you to uh, come out to an interview uh, and put you through the full interview and everything like that. Um, I guess take your resume, ask you the normal interview questions, I think have you taken English test, which pretty normal. Some some jobs make you do that, take an English test. Mind you, it's usually a pretty damn easy English test or I've had ones where I don't even know if I'm answering it correctly because it's really, really specific English questions um, and I still get the job. So it's it's usually not a hugely dependent on whether or not you get the job thing. So don't, don't start worrying about stuff like that. Will I pass an English test? Um, but after you get through all that, at the end, they said they were asked money for processing their job application. If at any point a possible future employer asks you for money to process your job application, now I'm not saying, you know, process your visa, you know, if your visa needs to be processed and they need money for that, or if they make you pay for your plane ticket to Japan, yeah, a lot of companies make you do that, sorry. Um, sometimes they can get you really good deals, like when I came to Japan, I only paid 600 bucks for my trip, which is pretty cheap for the ticket. Um, and I remember I did have to pay for my own visa, that wasn't a lot of money, uh, but I did not pay for any kind of processing. I think the closest thing to processing I had was I had to pay for my own transcripts to be sent, which was like five dollars. Um, but they've talked about fees where they said, uh, the story that I'd heard, the person had asked them to pay Sanman, and which is like an, almost about three hundred dollars which it's not a ton of money but uh, if you end up three hundred dollars more poor while you're looking for a job that definitely cannot help your situation so number one scam right away if anyone ever asks you to pay money to process a job application they are lying it is a scam um, who this scam was connected to is still very vague and nebulous some people said this was like a yakuza scam out there in tokyo um, some people said this was um, people who were other kaijin from other countries uh, pretending to be Japanese as in Asian people from other Asian countries pretending to be Japanese running an English business um, and then just taking money. You know, I don't want to nail down any one country or then I'm going to get yelled at by like, oh, you're racist, sorry, 
This was the, this is what I was told by the party telling me the story. I'm not I'm not trying to just be like, well, it could possibly be this. Allude to just random facts. Um, so that was the situation with that uh, first scam. So second scam is a, a bit of a strange one. Um, and this is one I've heard about in Osaka and Tokyo. Now, most of the times, these scams are usually going to be run uh, in big city areas. But don't get me wrong, there are some pretty, whew, how would I say, pretty deceitful schools and jobs that can be out there in the middle of the countryside too. But this, this doesn't relate to jobs. This is actually kind of donations. Um, if you know anything about Buddhism, you may know that one aspect of one of the branches of Buddhism uh, for a Buddhist monk is to commit to an act of humbleness. And to do this, uh, they literally beg in the streets. Uh, usually they are in full monk garb. Um, it's a pretty ritualistic looking set of cloths. I don't know the exact name for the dressing that that's called because it is a word completely connected to the lexicon of the Buddhist religion. Sorry, my Japanese isn't that good. Um, nonetheless, they wear these while they're begging. Usually they have a pole of humility that they're banging up and down. Well, not banging, but they'll shake it every time someone gives them a donation. And this isn't for them to be like, hey, everybody, look at me, I got money. It's actually more for that person to be like, look how good this person is giving me money while I'm having to go through this act of humility. When you give them this money, this money is actually used either for them to get their food for the day um, or just do simple everyday life things and um, they don't give you anything for this they don't um, you, you, they, they may say a prayer for you that's about it uh, but they don't physically give you any object or hand you any trinket or give you any kind of I don't know what you would say talisman or something like that which you know a lot of these temples and shrines that you visit have their votives and talismans and stuff that you can pay for and usually these are to make prayers um, to whatever the patron God is of usually that Shinto shrine or Buddhist temple. Anyway, back on task, we are talking about scams that are connected. Now, these monks never pull scams. These monks are holy people. They're not trying to do this. Unfortunately, um, there has been a scam being pulled recently, and this has been pinned down to a Chinese organization. Um, I, I don't know exactly who. I don't have any but of course, this was this went back to some kind of Chinese scam that Chinese people were coming over here and dressing as Buddhist monks and handing people out a trinket, like some kind of small plastic coin or some kind of fake talisman, and then telling them they needed to pay a donation for taking that. So the first thing they would do is walk up to you and be like, hey, hey, here, here, take this, take this nice Buddhist thing. And you're just like, oh, oh, okay. Like you, you get handed a lot of stuff in Japan. You get handed tissues, you get handed flyers. You get handed a lot of stuff just as you're walking down the street. So it wouldn't be that odd for you to just be like, okay, okay, whatever, I'll take it. And then after they'd be like, whoa, 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 you don't just walk off. You gotta donate now, you took my trinket. And if you don't, they start to get kind of furious and stuff, which is really not Buddhist at all. Any monk would never uh, commit to such an act. Any truly Buddhist monk um, of the true Buddhist faith would never even slightly come close to this sort of demeanor or force things upon you or expect any payment from you or do anything of the sort. So right away that's the first sign that this is a scam. And so this is how the scam is working. I've heard some people have been asked to donate as much as 3,000 yen, which is like 30 bucks. Uh, that, that's a lot. That is a ton. I mean usually what these people are giving these monks going through this act of humility is literally like a couple of coins out of their pocket. Like whatever just coins they have laying around inside because you do you do have a ton of change in Japan. You, there's one thing you'll realize when you come to live here. It is the country of pocket change. You will end up with loads of pocket change. Um, so there we go. That's another little scam going on. Um, as far as other little scams going on, um, there are jobs that you need to check into. I would say, unless you're working for a big chain, uh, it's, it's pretty easy for you to do a little bit of research, like for example, GABA's got a really bad name around town as uh, not really treating their employees the best, not paying very good wages, constantly keeping people like at near poverty while they work for them. Um, ECC's got a really good reputation. I've never heard a bad thing about them. Um, for the most part, everybody who I ever hear work for them seems to be pretty damn satisfied. So you can see there's, 
you know, almost a difference of like black and white there. You, you need to check into that yourself and make sure you're not even in some kind of indiscreet gray area where you can't figure out what kind of company you're working for. Or if you're working for one of these smaller companies, as I was saying earlier in the countryside, you need to really check into it. For example, I just did a whole thing on a guy who was screwed over on a kind of a countryside at Kiowa, which is an English conversation school or international kindergarten. I guess it was kind of half and half, really. It was an international kindergarten, too, and they were doing things like not paying him his full paycheck, holding money back because they wanted him to pay back his key money on his apartment, which are things they should actually be paying themselves. I mean, they shouldn't force you into an apartment, force you into paying key money, force you to choose something that they select. Uh, it's That's insane. So really check into the company you're working for, too, because sadly there have been a lot of scams in the past because what happens is if a gaijin even wants to make a complaint to the labor board, oftentimes they have to wait quite a long time, which during that time their visa may run out and they may not even be able to press charges against the company when they leave Japan. And no one's going to get an international lawyer. If anybody thinks they're getting an international lawyer to attack something internationally, they're full of shit. There's, it's so outrageously expensive, it's never going to happen. Um, I guess on kind of a sad ending note, I hate to end it like this. Um, well, I guess no. Okay, you know what? Before I end it on that, let me let me do one last scam. And this is one that's just recently popped up. I'm part of a Facebook group that talks about Osaka all the time. There's one called The Best of Osaka, and there's another Facebook group called The Worst of Osaka. A hilarious group. Great people who are there. But the good thing about them is they constantly call out scams. And there is a guy running scams in Osaka now for a long time. He's notorious for it. He goes by the fake username. This is not his real name, so I'm not doxing him. For all of you who want to be like, he can't put people's real name online. This isn't his real name, but this is the name he uses to do his scams. It is David Maximilian Power. And apparently what he does is he runs a Bitcoin scam in which he tells people they can sublet an apartment from him, which is actually illegal in Osaka. You cannot sublet um, unless you are an actual real estate company that can do that. As an individual, you're not supposed to be able to sublet. Of course, it does go on. I mean, let's be honest. Um, but he apparently what he does is he'll take your money. He'll only take your payment via Bitcoin. And because it's not traceable, he won't actually deliver any sort of apartment, you'll show up and find your place already being lived in. Uh, and apparently he's been creating new Facebook accounts over and over again, doing this over and over again. He's been running all other kind of scams too, and uh, once he gets confronted, which he has been many times, uh, the first thing he does is he gets angry and shows how what his background is by showing a, a copy of his resume, which is just like this fake crazy resume that has so much extra stuff on it that it doesn't make sense. Like he served 13 years in the military, but also went to college for like a master's degree and like a medical degree and like had 12 years of Kung Fu training. I mean, it, it, it gets to a ludicrous point where you're just like laughing your head off at the stuff this guy is trying to imagine he's done. Um, but he is notorious for running constant scams on different Osaka sites, Osaka Sayonara Sales, um, Best in Osaka. Just be careful if you see that name, David Maximilian Powers. It's connected to scams constantly. Uh, and last but not least, like I said, I'm kind of ending on a sad note. Um, <clears throat> it appears the video that I did earlier on Ken Cannon is true. Um, I had talked about how there had been people not receiving money. Now, there had been some mistakes I had made. I had originally said it was $2,000 that people were losing. That's not entirely the way it works. Apparently, there was two different things that they could purchase, and if they purchased both of those at the same time, which was pretty rare, the total would come to $2,000 that they were losing. Most people only purchased either uh, one-fourth of this whole teaching plan or the whole teaching plan, which in total comes to $1,000 usually, but on average people lost anywhere from $500 to $1,000. Currently there is a class action lawsuit being filed against Ken Cannon. I'm going to put a link to the Facebook site because as of now, it's been nearly a year since Ken has said that he was going to have his classes, his JTA classes, I think they're called, uh, Japanese through anime platinum class. Now, another mix up people had is they said, wait, I've already watched my classes. I got everything I paid for. Well, there's like apparently a starter beginner set of classes and there's these, these live classes and these platinum classes. And it's something like the platinum classes are the ones that haven't been delivered. This is more specific to those people who have purchased the whole thing and because I don't have every bit of information verbatim, I'm actually going to have a, uh, what would you call it, like a live, it's not going to be live because it's going to, well I guess it's going to be live if you watch it this, the day we record it, um, a Hangouts with uh, 
the guy who is actually following up the class action lawsuit against Ken Cannon right now. Um, it, it's a sad situation because what it really appears, and I mean this is my honest opinion, is I think Ken's a good guy. I think he's made a very bad business decision because it appears he bought way more advertising than he could possibly pay for and it bankrupted his company and now he's kind of on the run. And uh, because he's on the run and he's trying to dodge all sort of collectors and everything, um, he's kind of gone into hiding as much as possible and also, um, I guess, because he's in hiding, he can't make those classes because then it would kind of give people uh, a whereabouts of where he is. It would kind of let people know a status update of him because it would have to be him in the flesh with some kind of building in the background or at some point somewhere. <laughs> um, and because of that, all those people have lost all this money on paying for these classes. And the sad, the really sad thing is they still have the ability to pay for these classes. His website's still up. His YouTube is still up, which I can understand that YouTube's still up, but a way to pay is still up. Um, I've even heard things like even you can pay through PayPal still for his classes um, and people can still easily lose money. So if you're considering that the JTA Japanese through anime classes, please hold off for right now until everything is settled. I mean, maybe Ken can redeem himself and get this all figured out. Maybe the final threat of having a class action lawsuit start it will get him to finally uh, jump out of hiding and come to the realization that even though he is in a dark situation, he does owe people these classes that he did promise and take their money for. Um, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate. I get so much hate when I talk about this situation. Uh, guys, I, I have nothing against Ken. I don't, I don't think he's a bad dude. I don't think he went out of his way to be malicious. I think, like I said, he made a bad business decision. It put him in a dire situation. He may be able to get himself out of it for right now, but it may take a little bit of, you know, stoking the flames. It may take a little bit of poking and prodding, and maybe that's what this start of a class action lawsuit might... Let me remind you that you can start one. You don't have to completely follow through. Sometimes just taking legal action really gets somebody's attention, and they jump out of hiding and be like, okay, look, this has gone too far. I'm screwed up, okay? I need to get this situation handled. And I think that's more so what this is all about. It's just kind of being like... Look, you know, and the thing is, I think a lot of the people who want the classes and a lot of the people who are angry that they lost the money, I think if they knew Ken's situation and he came forward, because I've seen, what I've seen actually is a list of, well, if you, and the website I'm going to link you to, you're going to see it all there. You're going to see it verbatim. Uh, the conversation, the main guy who had the, the lawsuit started with, um, the conversation he had with him about his situation, his dire consequences and everything of making bad business decisions. You're going to see exactly went down, like, how he got himself into this situation. And I think if he let everybody know this, not just have one conversation with one guy, if he let everybody know this, if he got on YouTube and just shouted out, look, I screwed the fuck up, I'm so depressed and angry and I'm in such a bad situation right now, people would be like, look, Ken, we can give you a break, man. Like, we can give you some time to figure this shit out, but just let us know what the fuck is going on, right? I mean, that's the big thing. Um, I think they just want to get, you know, and, and some of those people might even help you, Ken. Some of those people might even come out of the woodwork and be like, I'm not angry. You, and in fact, I'll give you more money to help you get out of your situation. But I just wanted a response, and I think that's what people are really angry about. Anyway, guys, sorry to end it on kind of that negative note. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate and thumbs down on that one, but like I said, I want to inform my viewers and users, my fans, everybody of any kind and every kind of scam, con, and loss of money that could possibly happen when you come to Japan because money is tight when you get here. When you first get here, when you first get off the boat, when you first jump off that plane, money is tight and you need to save every bit that you can. Until next time, I'm Unrested, trying to help you get to Japan, visit Japan, enjoy Japan. If you like what you saw here today, please like, comment, and subscribe. Have a good one.